but not least, it's a pleasure to me to also introduce our third speaker, it's Simone Scholz. Welcome, Simone. As you can see, nothing could stop her from being here with us today. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Anja, for your warm welcome. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, Simone is working at A1 Telekom Austria in Vienna at the Data and Business Intelligence Competence Center. And Simone's passion is to show the beauty and the potential of data science to everyone, knowing also that the success of data science depends on everyone and on fairness. And this is why uh, Simona will talk about uh, fair AI and how they handle this topic uh, at A1. Simona, stage is yours. So, yes, since I'm a little child, I'm, a, I'm very passionate about um, fairness in general. So you can ask my twin brother, he will, he will prove it. And um, therefore, I'm very happy to share with you my dream of fair AI at our company, A1. And luckily, um, I was not the only one who had this dream. So, um, first of all, I, I would like to tell you why um, we had this huge dream. Um, because, as you already have seen, there are many examples in real life. Um, and um, one example is um, like uh, voice recognition. So females have a big advantage because sometimes the voice uh, is not recognized by the tool or in job research, um, uh, job recommendations. So if you're looking for a job as a woman, um, you mainly get uh, more than not well-paid jobs recommended. Um, the same thing is in diagnostics. So um, as a woman, you have a big ad uh, advantage a disadvantage because um, the data is mainly um, based on, on the male um, patients and so sometimes the diagnostic doesn't fit to the women. Um, same if, if you want to get a credit card. Um, there is a famous example where a couple um, both wanted to have a new credit card and um, she um, um, applied for it, and he as well, and um, both had the same expenses, the, f the same low end, uh, the same household income, and though um, she got only half the credit card limit than her husband, so I would say that's quite unfair. And this is also a very famous example. Um, it's used from the US court. It's a tool called Compass, and um, this tool is uh, used if someone is um, as a, someone committed a crime, and this tool tells you the likelihood that this person is committing a crime again. And here, black people had really um, yeah a, a bad lack likelihood, so it was definitely a, a racial bias. So um, yeah, that's why I, um, uh, me and together with six other people in our company, I uh, had the huge dream that um, this shouldn't be our world. So if it's possible that we can do anything against it, um, we, we definitely should do it. And so uh, our vi vision was to have um, more fairness and more trustworthiness in our AI systems at our company. and. Um, yeah, in autumn 2022, we already started with it, with this idea, with this vision. And as all the usual startups ideas, we also started in a kind of a garage because we thought it's more cool to be there. So not in the company, in the usual boring um, yeah, meeting rooms. And so we had a really good time there. We, we discussed a lot, so that's very important for this topic. And uh, we also had a lot of fun. So concerning the tennis, we had a table tennis there. So <laughs> in between, we sometimes played around to, to cool down after the discussions. So yeah, it was a good, good start. And how did we do that? So what was our approach? And that's what I really would like to share with you. So maybe you want to try it as well. So at the very beginning, we had to study a lot. So we read many, many different papers about these topics. We wanted to find out which types of biases um, does exist. So you already heard from my colleagues that there are lots of biases. So we studied a lot. We uh, were uh, watching different talks about this topic. We searched through the web. So lots of studying here to really get a knowledge about this huge uh, topic. 
Next, we started to play. Um, and to be on the legal safe side, um, we kind of um, used synthetic data and also trained a biased model. So that was our playground. Then we applied the experience we gained from our playground in, in real life. And finally, we were um, uh, kind of, um, <laughs> yeah, we had the, the, the challenge that there are high-risk AI, um, apparently, and what do we do with it? So what are the, the most important actions that you have to set? So I think I don't have to tell too much about the types of biases because you already heard so many cool uh, examples. I just want to, to show you the kind of magic triangle that we used. Um, so from data to algorithm and through the user, and it's always a circle because everybody is kind of influencing everybody. Um, and one famous um, bias in concerning from data to algorithm um, is their representation bias. Um, this example is uh, concerning face recognition, uh, which means that here the data was um, mainly based on white skinned facers. So therefore, the, the tool who should recognize um, the face had real problems to recognize dark skinned faces. So, Actually, yeah, I would say there are many, many people in this world who are not white-skinned, so this tool is not really useful. Um, the next thing um, is from algorithm to the user. Um, so the algorithm can display or even amplify the already existing, data, uh, existing bias from the data. Um, and one example here is the evaluation bias. So on one hand, we have the, the training data, so you should take care that there is no bias. And then, of course, also the test data should have no bias, because otherwise, you know, you're ev evaluating something with its, with its, um, which is, again, biased. And the third thing, of course, are the people. <laughs> so um, as you all know, especially the women in this room, um, we have the gender pay gap. Um, so it's still in our culture that women earn less money than men. And um, this is a typical cultural bias. And this bias is, of course, reflected in the data. And um, as I mentioned before, like the job recommendation tool, you can see it there again. Yeah. So, Thankfully, Google withdraw their recommendation now. So let's come to our playground. Um, one of my colleagues, he had the really smart idea that he um, uh, creates uh, synthetic data, and he hides secretly biases in the data, so he didn't tell us, the rest of the group. And he also trained an unfair uh, machine learning model. And then he gave us the data and said, play around. What you find out, tell me. Um, so it was a really good idea. So we tested many, many different um, um, bias metrics. Um, so kind of all the attributes that were in this synthetic data. Um, we had a, a huge list of different biases we had from our studies before, and we tested them all. And then we compared the different bias metrics to find out which one we really like and which one is, is also adaptable in our company. And of course, which is always really important, are the discussions. So we always had already lots of discussions about the uh, metrics, which one um, is best, which one is valid more for us, and so on. Um, the next thing is uh, you really have to understand the source of the bias. Uh, because only if you understand the source of the bias, you get the chance to correct this as good as possible. Um, and one possibility to correct this is you add more data. For example, if, uh, if women are underrepresented in, in the data, then you can add more women, for example. Or you resample the data. So there are many different methods how you can solve this problem. And as always, we had also lots of discussions here, but that was very inspirative. And um, if you find out that there are sensitive attributes, so sensitive attributes are like gender, race, origin, so things which are really personal and where you have this huge bias problem. So if you find out that sensitive attributes have a strong impact in your machine learning model, and if this decision of the machine learning model will harm a special group of people, then you definitely have to think about these sensitive attributes. So 
is it possible to um, uh, kind of use something, un uh, use something different, or do you have to remove it? So you really have to, to think about how to do this sensitive um, thing. And here it's very important to watch out for correlation. So it doesn't make sense if you, for example, um, skip the gender, but then you have like income, which is highly correlated with the gender. So, yeah, so really have to take care um, what you do here so that you don't kind of uh, get the problem from the other side. And as you can imagine, lots of discussions. And the good thing was that we were a really diverse group. So the men sometimes were quite chilled, and we were really you know, discussing hardly. And sometimes it was the other way around. So um, good to have us. And yes, at the very end, we were very happy with our playground. Um, it was a really successful experiment. And um, we, we earned a lot of, of new ideas, of new experiences. And so we were ready to start into real life and to try it out. So we applied um, all the knowledge we, we gained uh, in, a real, uh, in a real machine learning model. Uh, we started with a model from the campaigning. And um, after we, we kind of explored new, new, new knowledge there, then we tried to spread it out so that every machine learning model, uh, model at A1 is really proved and checked concerning fair AI. And uh, spreading out, we have a, a one um, data science community. Here is also one of my colleagues <laughs> from this community. And uh, so we spread out the knowledge, told our colleagues how we did the approach, um, uh, which uh, interesting things there are, which discussions are ne necessary. So um, we really wanted to share this. Um, then the, um, the, the knowledge is now applied for all the a machine learning model, so we call it the FAIR AI check. Um, our standard bias metric, so as I already mentioned, we tried out many, many different metrics. And our uh, standard one is now the flip test. I will tell you later how it works. And um, finally, we told our community that it's very important if you try out something, then always uh, look for some other colleagues to discuss it. Because uh, um, you always need the different perspectives, because everybody is in, is in his own bubble. And so we really need the different uh, views on, on a topic. Um, the flip test, our standard um, metric. Um, imagine we have a campaign and we would like to offer our customers um, a voucher of 120 euros. And um, we use a machine learning model um, that selects the target group. So before we send the emails, of course, the machine learning model helps us. And we wanted to know um, if female customers are negatively discriminated um, concerning this product offer or not. So here we use the flip test. Um, the so-called counterfactual flip test, that's the official name, um, works like that, that um, you have, you kind of uh, scoring the female, and then you get the, the output, the outcome. And then um, instead of the female, you just uh, change one attribute. So in this case, we change only the gender, and we change the content of the gender from female to male. So the rest is kind of um, stays the same, only the gender is, is flipped. And then kind of the second group is, is female, they pretend to be a man. So. And then you compare the outcomes of these two scorings. And if the, the females have less predicted, um, um, then the, the females have, of course, have a disadvantage. If the proportion of both uh, are equal, then it's, it's fair, so there's no disadvantage. And if there are more positive predicted uh, for females, then um, it's a positive discrimination for the, for the women. So it's an advantage for the women. So um, in, in our company, if we have um, positive discrimination, we usually accept it. But negative discrimination is absolutely no go. Um, and so that um, we can check this in, in, in every machine learning model, um, we Im implemented it in Jira, because in Jira is our documentation tool for all the machine learning models. And in Jira, um, we uh, implemented um, the 
the very high impact, um, the impact and the sensitivity. And the sensitivity and the impact, you can make a matrix out of it. And if you're in the green and then the yellow part, then you're completely fine, so there's no discrimination. If you're in the orange part, medium, then it is usually a positive discrimination, which means um, we offer a product to someone, especially, but if another customer is coming to our shop, for example, then he can also get the same thing. So it's just not that he gets the offer first, but if he wants, he can also have it. Whereas the, the, um, the red part um, um, means that there is a negative discrimination, so only a special group of customers uh, gets the offer, whereas the others, they doesn't get it. They don't get it. Um, and this really um, high-risk AI, um, this is the one where you know, we get a real alert. And then the discussion is not only anymore between the data scientists, but also between uh, our colleagues from business, because like, they are the campaign managers, and also our legal department. Because as you all know, the AI Act is coming, so in, in probably May um, it will be valid. And so we really have to put an eye on, on this um, to be here in a, in a safe space. And yeah, finally, I, I would like to kind of give you my, my personal advice. Be transparent and fair in all your AI models. And it starts already at the very beginning. So um, if, for example, the, the business uh, colleagues are coming and they usually have a requirement, and then because of that requirement, you um, are building a machine learning model. And if they're coming, then at the very beginning, already start to have a clear and fair requirement. So if the requirement is already not really fair, then really discuss it and, and ask them if this is really the way they want to do it. The next step as a data scientist, um, find out all the potential bias in, uh, biases in your training data. Find out the potential biases in your algorithms. Uh, if there is an impact of sensitive features, discuss it, how you can deal with that. Um, because you never want to harm a special group of people with your model, so that's definitely not the, 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 the target. And if there are high-risk AI cases, then there definitely must to be uh, set actions to minimize this risk. And so therefore, not only we, but I hope also you, we all together want to make a, a better world. And um, thanks for listening. Thank you, Simona. Do you want to take a seat? No, it's okay. No, okay, um, fine. <laughs> still okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, having heard about so much biases everywhere, it's a classical question to a statistician. Do you believe in any analysis done by someone else? <laughs> Ooh, a <that's> hard question. <laughs> it's like with the cheating of your own statistics. I never believe it. <laughs> No, you're always positive thinking, don't yeah, you? Especially. Yeah, that, that's you great. Know me <laughs> that's great. Okay, uh, yeah, again, first question. Any online uh, question yet? No, maybe later on. From the audience, we have one over there. Uh, sports again for Eva. Uh, hello, thank you for the presentation. Uh, you mentioned that in your company, positive bias is usually accepted, but what I understood is that if uh, a certain individual or certain minority is positive bias, then it is also kind of negative bias for the other side, right? How it is actually managed in your company and what's your opinions about it? Um, the, the positive bias or positive discrimination um, means that we actively contact a special target group and we especially offer them, for example, the, the voucher. But if this uh, one of the, the target group tells the neighbor, oh, I got a really cool offer, then it's no problem that the neighbor is also coming and he also gets the same offer. So it's just, you know, we, we just don't proactively offer the neighbor the thing, but he can get it as well. So therefore, we think that, it, that it's okay. Yeah. Could you maybe call it customized? 
Yeah, kind of, of course, uh, that, that's the way campaigning works. And as you always try to customize things. And what would not be OK, you know, if, if the, the neighbor is coming and we say, no, sorry, although, you know, it's, it would be possible for you, but we don't get, you don't get it. Yeah, it definitely would be a negative discrimination. But positive in, in, the, in the meaning of economic point of view, I think, is OK. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. OK, meanwhile, we have an online question and then one after. Maybe Over one there. from my side. Um, how successful was the FAIR AI approach at uh, our A1? Meaning how many high-risk models were running in the past? In the past? Luckily, only one so far. Um, um, so this is a really rare um, event, which is luckily the case. So most of the, the use cases are low or maximum medium. And there is only one until now um, since yeah, during the last half and the, uh, one and a half years that was high risk. And we found a solution. So we had a lot of discussions with the business and the legal department, and we found a solution. Yeah, this wasn't the online question, but it comes now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we. So yeah, we actually have multiple online questions. The first is thanks for the informative talk, and if you have heard of similar incentives from other companies, especially regarding safety. Safety um, concerning our approach that we did this with the with the synthetic data, or probably. Yeah, yeah. No, so if, if this is, is meant, then no, not so far. And I think we were little pioneers concerning this. So actually, we're not really allowed to talk to, to Magenta or so, how, how they do this. Of course, I know some data scientists from there, but um, no, I, I don't know that they did this. So, mm. but, but if there is someone here from Magenta or from any other telecommunication <laughs> company, feel free to ask me and I share everything because it's a really topic that comes from my heart. So I really would like to share it. It's eh? important for the customer. Yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't share any other secrets of, of our company, but this one I would share. <laughs> yeah. There's one more question which concerns basically what about the bias variance trade off? The bias what? Variance. Variance. Trade off. Um, poo. Hmm. Poo. I, I don't know to be. To be. The, the variance that. Um, I actually, I don't really understand the question. Maybe the, the one can type it in again with more explanations. Yeah. And meanwhile, yeah, yeah, yes, please. <laughs> and meanwhile, we will take the, the question from the audience. Yeah. Hello. So thank you for the presentation. So I have one question, like uh, you, you talk about the bias. So, so let's say if, uh, we use like pretend models for our, uh, so how do we tackle this pretend model from the biasness? Because there are so many biases in pretend models. So you talk about the synthetic data. We can take care of the synthetic data when we mill our own models. But what about the pretend models? How do we tackle the such issue? Because we have so many stereotypes of data, trillions of data already filled on this. So how do you tackle from this? You mean you're using pre-trained data? Mm -hmm. Yeah, models, pretend models. models yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, yeah, as, so the, the flip test actually is a quite good method, I think, um, to, to try out what's, what's the outcome of your pre-trained model. So, for example, if you have sensitive attributes, it's, I think it's, it's mainly interesting if you have sensitive attributes inside your model. If you only use, I don't know, the car size or whatever, then, then I think, okay, you're safe. Um, but if you have these sensitive attributes, uh, I would really try out these metrics, uh, like the flip test. So, and then you even, if you use a, a model which is already existing, I think you then can use it yeah? and try out. OK, um, so if you have any further questions, the speakers will be all here also in the break afterwards. Online, as I said, maybe Google them, stalk them, <laughs> contact them afterwards. Um, I'm sure they will answer your questions uh, also after today. Uh, yeah, thanks again. Please stay with me on stage. Thanks again. To all speakers, of course. Oh, Mamma Mia.